Hello everyone and welcome to Earth Week 2021 at WMAES. Our theme for Earth Week this year is environmental integrity. We know that integrity means doing the right thing in all circumstances, even when no one is watching. It's so important that we show integrity in the way we take care of our environment at school and in our community, not just during Earth Week, but every day. WMAES has shown environmental integrity in many ways that we can be proud of. Here are some examples. As you listen to the ways we've shown environmental integrity, think of times that you've helped care for our environment and ways that you'd like to help in the future. WMAES has held over 17 Earth Week celebrations. During those 17 Earth Weeks, WMA WMAES students have planted over 5,000 trees on our campus. Since 2019, we have recycled over 12,000 pounds of waste. That is like 10 elephants worth of waste that we have kept out of the landfills. WMAES has been recognized as a green school since 2010. We have provided over 60 acres of habitat by planting vegetable gardens, prairies, and native gardens like the one in front of the elementary. We have had a garden at WMAES for the past 17 years. Uh, that garden has been planted by our students, and we've had produce that has been used to feed students and donated to local food banks. Finally, we are fortunate, fortunate enough to see WMAES students learning in and about the environment every day. We are also proud of your environmental integrity. We have an exciting opportunity to uh, show environmental integrity during many fun activities during this Earth Week. I'm excited to see you all making a positive impact on our environment. Happy Earth Week, everyone. Hey, Mr. Sean, did you know it's the 51st Earth Day? I had no idea. Has it been 51 years? 51 years. Cool. We're sad that we missed last year, but we have a lot of fun things planned this week. Starting with Monday, April 19th, uh, we're going to start what we're calling Save the Trees Project. So we're encouraging your classrooms to save all of your paper that you've used and put it in a recycle bin and keep it for the whole week. And we're going to come around and weigh it on Friday. So your goal is to be the classroom that uses the least amount of paper. Whoever has the least amount of paper that they use for the week will win a pancake breakfast prepared by Mr. Sean and I and it will be with the school maple syrup. Mm. Awesome. Uh, let's not forget about Tuesday. Tuesday's no paper day, folks. So do what you can to just not use any paper. Maybe take your class outside and use the Chromebooks outside. Uh, use sidewalk chalk to do your math lessons outside. Uh, use whiteboards instead of paper. Anything to reduce the amount of paper we're using that day. And then Wednesday, April 21st, it's Lights Out Day. So that's another great day for you guys to get outside with your teachers, uh, maybe explore some ecosystems that you haven't seen before, and try to go off trail and explore with purpose. Awesome. And Thursday, April 22nd, that's Earth Day, folks. So Earth Day, you can wear green or blue school appropriate clothing. You do not have to pay a dollar for this. This is a free, no uniform day. And we're gonna be uh, planting trees all week, but especially on Earth Day. And remember, that's a great day to uh, continue working on those classroom projects that you guys were talking about in the beginning of the week. And then Friday is the paper weigh day. So Mr. Sean and I will come around and weigh the amount of paper you used um, and see who the winner is. And we'll announce that on Friday. We're also gonna do a campus-wide cleanup so your teachers will take you to a place where we're going to spend some time as a whole class or a whole school and uh, pick up the campus. And as Mr. Sean said, this year we're planting trees with your class during the week. So what do we have, Mr. Sean? 300 trees? We have 300, 300 spruce trees. trees. So Awesome. So get excited. Get outside. Let's have some fun this week. Happy Earth Week. See you guys. Bye. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited that Earth Week's coming up. Um, we got a new book for the Literacy Nest. It is called Many, The Diversity of Life on Earth by Nicola Davies, illustrated by Emily Sutton. So I thought I'd read this to you because I'm super excited about Earth Day. Look at those beautiful end pages. Oh. Many, The Diversity of Earth, Life on Earth. 
how many different kinds of living things are there on our planet? One, two, three, many! Yes, there are so many from big things like elephants and oak trees. There are two kinds of elephants, African and Asian, and more than 600 kinds of oak trees. To small things like mushrooms. So far, scientists have counted 100,000 kinds of mushrooms and microbes. Microbes are so small, you need a microscope to see them. There could be 5,000 kinds in just one teaspoon of dirt. Everywhere you look, there are living things. In deserts, on islands far out at sea. Under the feathers of birds and on backs of beetles. I think it's lichen beetles, lichen beetles, have tiny plants growing on their backs, which help them to stay hidden and safe. The bright colors of this lake are made by microbes. Even places where you would think nothing at all could live, like boiling volcanic lakes. <laughs> Counting how many kinds there are can be difficult because some places are hard to look in like the tops of tall trees in the jungle or the bottom of the coldest seas. I just love these illustrations. It can also be difficult because sometimes things that look different are really the same. Young queen angelfish, adult queen angelfish. And things that look the same are really different. A viceroy butterfly versus a monarch butterfly. And I know some of you have definitely talked about that in class. But mainly, it's difficult because there are just so many living things. So far, human beings have found and counted almost 2 million different kinds of living things. I'm not gonna read them all today, guys. But that's only the start. There could be many millions more. Thousands of new species are found every year. All the living things on this page have been found in the last 50 years. And the more we find, the more we learn about how living things depend on one another for food, for places to live, and for ways to grow. Jaguars eat pacas, which eat the fruits and seeds from the trees. Hummingbirds eat insects and nectar, and insects eat nectar. Toucans live in the tree holes. Some bats bite holes in leaves, so they droop to make a tent. Pacas poop out the tree seeds they've eaten, which grow into new trees. Baby frogs grow into pools of rainwater and leaves. Bees carry pollen to the flowers, which allow flowers to grow seeds. Another thing I know you guys have talked about here in your classes. We have learned that every kind of living thing is a part of a big, beautiful, complicated pattern. It must have taken forever to do some of these illustrations. They're so intense. The trouble is, all over the world, human beings are destroying pieces of the pattern. Chemicals poison the air, rivers, and oceans. Fishing boats take too much from the sea. People build roads that divides forests into pieces. Causing animals and plants to disappear. Extinct species. Many kinds of living things have already been lost. Some have disappeared before you've had a chance to find them. Look at all these extinct animals. Human beings are part of the pattern too, and we need to make sure it stays big, beautiful, and complicated. 
because we could not keep living on earth if we had to count down instead of up from many to one. The end. Thank you, Mrs. Baxter. You're welcome. Hi, WMAS. One way I show environmental integrity is I pack my lunch every single day with a reusable bag. And inside of my reusable bag, I also have some sandwich bags that are washable and reusable and bags for my snacks so that I'm not throwing away plastic baggies every day and filling up landfills. I love the earth and uh, I take care of it by teaching how to respect nature and each other. We use recycled materials and in almost every lesson we learn about different parts of nature and how to take care of it. When you leave a room, always turn off the lights. Oh hey Mr. Sean, check this out. What'd you find? I got some apple slices. Ooh. So, what I'm telling you guys is, if you see some uh, trash in the forest, use some integrity, pick it up, and throw it away in a garbage can. It's nice of you, Mr. Murray. Thanks. You're welcome. Hi, guys. One way that I show environmental integrity in my own house that I'm really excited about is I've been composting for the past couple of years. Um, so I take all my food scraps from cooking and any of my dead plants, and I put it in here, and then I drop it off at Urban Roots, downtown Michigan. And then they turn it into new soil to grow new plants for the community around us. So that is one way that I show environmental integrity. I love the environment, so I'm planting flowers in front of my house. Estoy plantando flores. Hey guys, I show environmental integrity by turning off the water when I'm brushing my teeth. Hey guys, I use reusable water bottles, many different kinds, and I've used them for many years to help reduce my single plastic water bottle usage. That's how I show environmental integrity. Hey Eagles, Coach Little here, talking about environmental integrity. In PE, we use it in a few different ways. But the main way we use it is by reusing random special equipment. For example, every once in a while, you probably go to the grocery store and you have grocery bags. Well, as my kindy first and second graders know, we use grocery bags as scarves in PE. So by reusing equipment, you get some good uses out of it and it saves the environment. Take care. Hi school friends. So one way our family um, helps the environment and is conscious is composting. So after we eat specifically our fruits and vegetables at home, um, we put it in a compost bucket. We usually use an ice cream container because who doesn't like ice cream? Um, put it in our composting container and then we put it in our garden. Um, one thing that we grow in our garden are strawberries that we make into our own uh, homemade strawberry jam and also we have grapevines at my in-laws house that we also use the compost material around for good soil for the worms um, we grow Concord grapes and make our own grape juice I grow a lot of my own vegetables so I collect water off the roof of our house in a rain barrel to water the vegetables and the trees and a lot of you know I live out in the country and so we let the back half of our property grow up as a natural grassland to provide habitat for the wildlife.